A volcano is a crack in the crust of the Earth, another planet, or a satellite from which molten rock, hot rock pieces, and hot gases are released in eruptions. An amazing demonstration of Earth's might is a volcanic eruption. Eruptions can cause catastrophic loss of life and property, especially in areas of the planet that are densely populated, despite the fact that they are beautiful to observe. Sometimes, they can be preceded by emissions of steam and gas from tiny vents in the subsurface, starting with an accumulation of gas-rich magma, molten subterranean rock, in reservoirs close to the Earth's surface. Volcanic eruptions, particularly explosive ones, may also be indicated by swarms of tiny earthquakes, which may be brought on by a rising plug of dense, viscous magma oscillating against a sheath of more permeable magma magma can occasionally rise in conduits to the surface as a thin fluid lava that either flows continuously or shoots straight up in glistening curtains or fountains other times trapped gases rip the magma to pieces and spew sticky clots of lava into the atmosphere in more intense eruptions the magma conduit is cored out by an explosive blast and solid fragments are released in a huge cloud of ash-laden gas that rises thousands of meters into the air. The Nuée Ardente, also known as the pyroclastic flow, is a feared phenomenon that sometimes occurs along with explosive eruptions. It is a fluidized mixture of hot gas and incandescent particles that sweeps down a volcano's flanks, consuming everything in its path. Large amounts of ice can melt when ash accumulates on a high snowfield or glacier, causing a torrent that can pour down a volcano's slopes as an uncontrollable mudflow. This can potentially cause great destruction. See the table listing the largest volcanoes in the world by region. Although the landform formed by the buildup of hardened lava and volcanic debris close to the vent is more commonly referred to as a volcano, the name technically refers to the opening through which magma and other substances erupt to the surface. For instance, one could say that the Mauna Loa volcano in Hawaii produces enormous lava flows, in which case the reference would be to the vent, but, one could equally say that Mauna Loa is a massive, gently sloping volcano, in which case the reference would be to the landform. Repeated volcanic activity has caused volcanic landforms to change over time. A shield volcano, like Mauna Loa, is a massive, gently sloping landform created by numerous eruptions of fluid lava. The structure of Mount Fuji in Japan is completely different. Mount Fuji is a typical stratovolcano, with its strikingly steep slopes made of layers of ash and lava. While the seafloor surrounding Iceland offers good examples of submerged volcanic structures, Iceland offers fine examples of volcanic plateaus. Many cultures that have adapted to eruptions feature volcanoes prominently in their mythology, yet, Science was slow to recognize the significance of volcanism in the development of Earth. Volcanoes were described as flaming mountains, which presumably are formed up of sulfur and some other matter proper to ferment with it, and take fire, in the first edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica, published in 1768. Today's geologists concur that volcanism is a significant phenomenon coming from the planetary body's thermal evolution, large things, like the Earth, make it difficult for heat to escape through conduction or radiation. Convection, which is the partial melting of the Earth's crust and mantle and the buoyant rise of magma to the surface, is how heat is instead primarily transmitted from the planet's interior. The visible result of this heat process are volcanoes. Their fruits are flung high into the heavens, while their roots extend far into the Earth. Volcanoes and plate tectonic activity go hand in hand. The vast solid rocky plates that make up the Earth's surface are where the majority of the planet's volcanoes, including those in Japan and Iceland, form. Other volcanoes, like those in the Hawaiian Islands, are situated in the center of a plate, offering crucial information on the direction and speed of plate motion. Volcanic Eruptions Lava, Gas, and Other Hazards 
Volcanic eruptions can cause a wide range of risks, including mud flows, lava flows, explosions, toxic gas clouds, ash falls, pyroclastic flows, avalanches, and tsunamis. Secondary consequences of volcanic activity include agricultural loss, property damage, and possibly changes to the weather and climate in addition to these acute hazards. This section gives a description of these risks and their long-term implications. Lava flows. About 70 to 200 kilometers, 40 to 120 miles, below the Earth's surface is where volcanoes can be located. Temperatures are high enough there in the upper mantle of the Earth to melt rock and create magma. Since the magma is typically less thick than the solid rocks above and around it at these depths, it rises toward the surface under the buoyant influence of gravity. Magma can occasionally rise directly to the surface through fractures that extend as far as the mantle, as is the situation in the undersea regions where the tectonic plates of the Earth's crust are separating. In other instances, it gathers in huge underground storage facilities called magma chambers before bursting to the surface. The term for molten rock that rises to the surface is lava. Explosions The sudden depressurization of a shallow hydrothermal system or gas-charged magma body, as well as the quick mixing of magma with groundwater, are all capable of causing large volcanic eruptions. The main eruption byproducts that are seen in volcanic eruptions all throughout the world include ash, cinders, hot pieces, and bombs. These solid goods are divided into various sizes. The best dust is volcanic, typically having the consistency of flour. Volcanic ash has particles that can reach the size of rice grains and is also fine but more abrasive. The following in size are cinders, also known as scoriae. These coarse fragments can range in size from 2 mm inch, to roughly 64 mm inches. Blocks or bombs are the terms used to describe fragments greater than 64 mm. Older rock is typically split into volcanic blocks during the explosive opening of a new vent. Such explosions have thrown large blocks up to 20 km 12 miles, away from the vent. In contrast, Volcanic bombs typically fly in a soft, incandescent state. Some explosives, when they spin through the air, take on bizarre, twisted shapes. Others are referred to as bread crust bombs and have a fractured and detached crust that has cooled and solidified in flight. A directed blast in which one side of a volcanic cone fails, as happened at Mount St. Helens, Indiana, the United States in 1980, can cause destruction over several hundred square kilometers on the failed flank of the volcano. This is especially true if the blast cloud is heavily laden with fragmental debris and becomes dense and fluidized. It then takes on characteristics similar to a pyroclastic flow. Pyroclastic flows. The most hazardous and destructive feature of explosive volcanism is pyroclastic flows. They go by many names, including glowing avalanches, ash flows, and news ardents, glowing clouds, but they all share the fluidized emulsion of volcanic particles, eruption gases, and trapped air that results in a flow with a low enough viscosity to be very mobile and a high enough density to hug the ground surface. A pyroclastic flow can develop when an ash column gets too dense to continue rising and falls back to the ground, or it can spill over the lip of an erupting vent. Huge pyroclastic flows may emerge from the ring fissures in significant caldera collapses linked to explosive volcanoes, see below calderas, as the caldera block subsides. Pyroclastic flows have temperatures ranging from 100 to 700 degrees Celsius, 212 to 1300 degrees Fahrenheit, and can move at velocities of up to 160 km per hour, 100 miles per hour. They sweep almost everything in their path aside and burn everything. In valleys, smaller pyroclastic flows frequently occur. Around a significant caldera collapse, large pyroclastic flows could disperse as a blanket deposit over hundreds or perhaps thousands of square kilometers. In the past two million years, three significant caldera collapses with pyroclastic eruptions of 280 to 2500 cubic kilometers 67 to 600 cubic miles of ash flows and ash falls have occurred in the western united states near yellowstone national park 
gas clouds. Even after an explosive eruption has destroyed everything it can, the hot, ash-filled gas clouds that are linked with it can sear plants and suffocate animals and people, killing them. Gases including carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, and sulfur dioxide can be found in gas clouds that are released by fumaroles, volcanic gas vents, or the abrupt overturn of a crater lake. In August 1986, a rapid release of carbon dioxide at Lake Nyos, a crater lake in Cameroon, West Africa, resulted in the deaths of more than 1,700 people. Scientists believe that volcanic carbon dioxide has been accumulating in the lake's deep strata for many years due to seepage into it, the outburst of gas, which produced an effervescence that shook the lake and began the degassing, is assumed to have been brought on by some disturbance, such as a significant landslide into the lake. Water vapor, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide are the most frequent volcanic gases. Other volatile substances and elements, such as hydrogen, helium, nitrogen, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen fluoride, and mercury, are also present in trace amounts. The precise gaseous substances that are emitted from magma depend on its temperature, pressure, and volatile elemental content. Which volatile gases are present depends critically on the amount of oxygen that is accessible. Methane, hydrogen, and hydrogen sulfide are chemically stable in the absence of oxygen, whereas water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide are stable when hot volcanic gases interact with air gases. Some volcanic gases separate at higher pressures because they are less soluble in magma than others. Studies at Kilauea in Hawaii show that while most sulfur gases and water are not released until the magma is almost at the surface, carbon dioxide starts to separate from its parent magma at depths of roughly 40 kilometers 25 miles. Carbon dioxide seeps from the magma chamber, which is located 3 to 4 kilometers 1.9 to 2.5 miles beneath the surface, are a major source of the fumaroles close to Halemaumau Crater at Kilauea Summit. However, fumaroles on Kilauea's rift zones are richer in sulfur and water vapor because a large amount of carbon dioxide escapes away at the summit before the magma is forced into the rift zones. Thank you for watching. View more our channel videos.